Welcome back to Talking Serpents. So today, I have an interesting video. So I'm going to be testing four different styles of heating elements for a reptile enclosure. So if you've ever wondered which one's the best, um, I'm going to go over all the pros and cons. And uh, what inspired this uh, YouTube video is, uh, well obviously I make these custom reptile enclosures constantly uh, for all my customers. I have many different sizes and variations on my website, TalkingSerpents.com. There will be a link down in the description below. And uh, anyways, I always get asked, how do you heat these reptile enclosures? So, I figured it's a lot better to show than it is to tell. So I'm sure there will be a lot to, um, to benefit off of this video. So uh, let's start diving into it. So the four heating elements that I chose are a heat bulb kit, a radiant heat panel, a heat pad, and heat tape. So I will be hooking all these heating elements up to a thermostat and I will be using the Herpostat 2 from Spider Robotics. I will be testing all these four heating elements on these two reptile enclosures right here. They're very, very, they're almost identical in size. Um, so I thought it was absolutely perfect for uh, doing all the tests in these enclosures. So I'll be able to do really nice comparisons. There will be absolutely no reptiles in either of these enclosures. And then I do have the temperature probe from the thermostat going down the middle because I will be reading the ambient temperature of reptile enclosures. And then I will be putting all of the heating elements on the right side of the enclosures. And then I will be putting a hydrometer in there for other reasons I'll get to a little bit later. And then I will be putting a, another thermometer, a digital thermometer, either underneath the heat source or on top of the heat source, depending on what style it is. So that way you get a, a basking temperature and you can see what it can do. Now it's time for the fun part, to test everything. So I'm going to be testing these two first. So the heat bulb kit and the radiant heat panel. Personally, uh, my predictions are, I think these two will do the best. So I'm going to install them and then we'll get testing. Just installed the two heating elements on the top reptile enclosure. I have the heat bulb kit. It installs with just a few screws. There is a hole for the power cord to go through the back wall. And uh, on the lower enclosure is the radiate, radiant heat panel. Looking good down there. Inside both of these enclosures is a hydrometer and right now they're both currently at 50% humidity and the reason why I have a hydrometer in there is because I'm going to be putting a couple moss bowls so a moss bowl in each reptile enclosure and uh, what the idea is or I should say what I do with my personal reptile enclosures because I like using heat bulb kits is I place the moss bowl beneath the heat bulb and all the heat evaporates the water in the moss bowl and then all the moisture is inside the reptile enclosure. So I'm able to sustain really great humidity for about five to seven days. Just place the digital thermometers underneath the heating elements. So now I will be able to see what the basking temperature is. And I'm going to be giving both of these enclosures um, enough time to completely heat up. So I'm gonna give them probably another 30 minutes to uh, get up to their maximum temperatures. As of right now, uh, they're both at 100% power. But as of now, time to let these two uh, warm up and then I'll come back and I'll discuss all the pros and cons. So it's been about an hour. Time to see how everything is doing. So we will start with this upper enclosure that has the heat bulb kit in it. Um, its current ambient temperature is 80.8. 80.9 so we'll say 80.8 it has a hundred percent power and uh, if you don't know what ambient temperature is the way I do ambient temperature is the center of the enclosure and um, yeah I think that's the proper way of doing it and then let's see what the thermometer is reading underneath the heat bulb and right now it is at 88.7 I'm sure if I push it over here it'd be a little hotter but uh, right now I have a 60 watt blue bulb in there 
but uh, if you needed a warmer temperature, obviously you can use basking uh, light specific. This is more of a daylight bulb, which is radiates all the heat out in a 360 degree um, manner. And then uh, if you need more heat, obviously you can go with a higher wattage bulb. Like I said, this one is 60 watts, and if I wanted to go hotter, I'd obviously go 75 watt or 100 watt. And uh, if you need it colder, well, you can either adjust your um, thermostat uh, to adjust what temperature you do need, because it will see what your temperature is, or you could just swap out your bulb wattage. Now let's see how the radiant heat panel is doing. The temperature is 84.8 degrees for the ambient temperature, and the thermometer is in the exact same place, right in the center. And let's see what this basking temperature is. 94.1 degrees. So this is a much larger heat panel. I definitely wanted, I bought one that's uh, honestly a little bit overkill, but uh, I wanted uh, more is better kind of mentality. So like I said, if you wanted less heat, um, then yeah, you would just adjust your, uh, your thermostat. Time to talk about the pros and cons. I say we start with the radiant heat panel. It is pretty wide, so it gives you more of a, an area where it will heat downward, which is, is fantastic. Um, now let's go for a con. Um, we'll talk about the elephant in the room. It's dark in there. Um, that means you're going to need to have a second source of power going into your reptile enclosure. Time to talk about another pro. These are definitely um, easy to maintain, so um, not a whole lot going on with it. You pretty much turn it on, and then you regulate the temperature through the thermostat, so I would say less maintenance. Now let's talk about another con. I think this is the biggest drawback of the radiant heat panel, is the price. They are quite a bit more expensive. Um, they are usually between, um, for this size anyways, between $80 up to $140, depending on brand and quality you go with. And I definitely like having nicer quality. I think I paid about $100 for this uh, radiant heat panel. I'm very excited uh, with its quality, so I don't have anything bad to say about that, but uh, it is uh, definitely more expensive than all the other heat sources. Time to talk about the pros and cons of heat bulbs. So this is what I personally have used for years. I really do enjoy them. Um, let's start with a pro. It uses different bulbs. It's a, it's a socket, like a light bulb socket, and you can use different styles. Like you can use ones that are specifically for basking, the one I'm using right now is a daylight bulb and it radiates the heat in all 360 degrees. So that is a huge positive, all different size wattages and stuff like that. A con for heat bulbs is that just like regular light bulbs, which these are not just regular light bulbs, they are very specific for reptiles, um, they do burn out. And when they do burn out, you do have to go inside your reptile enclosure and I do about a half turn um, on the screws that surround the bulb guard, and then I'm able to wiggle the bulb guard off, set it aside, and swap the bulb. So it's not too much of a big deal, especially that uh, these bulbs really don't burn out very often. Um, if you have a day-night cycle, they last uh, at least six months, uh, sometimes longer. So not too much of a con, but it is one nonetheless. Time for another pro, and I definitely enjoy this one. It is definitely a big perk, and that is, it is also a light source. You can see that there's light in there, you can see it's fantastic. Um, that way you don't have to run another power source in there, spend more money on uh, another light source. It is its own light source, as well as a heat source, so that is definitely a big pro for me. A con, I could say, would be, uh, you need to use a day-night timer uh, like this. Thermostat actually has day-night timer built into it. You can also buy 
day night timers, um, even at your hardware store or even reptile specific ones that I personally like using. Um, so you will need a day night timer that way your bulb is not on continuously throughout the day. Another positive for the heat bulb is like I said before, I have a bowl of moss water underneath the heating element and uh, it has bumped up the humidity in there so far. It hasn't been that long, but it has bumped it up um, an extra 5%. So right now it is at 55% humidity. I'm sure if I gave it more time, it would be even better. The humidity on the radiant heat panel actually went down 5%. So that is definitely a positive. You are able to have humidity inside your enclosure so long as you put a moss bowl underneath your heat bulb. I don't have another con, but I do have another pro. And that is the price. The price of a heat bulb kit, or the ones that I sell anyways, are uh, I sell them for $29.99 on my website, uh, talkingservice.com. So yes, they are a lot more affordable than a radiant heat panel and they do quite a bit. Just took the two heating elements out of there to eliminate all the variables. And I just took the fan and I uh, took all the warm air out of these enclosures. And now, and now it's on a nice clean slate ready for the next two heat sources. So I'm sure everybody is familiar with this. This is a heat pad. Most people start with uh, fish tanks. And then over here, we got heat tape. Usually people use these for rack systems. Got everything set up. Got my heat pad on the top and the heat tape on the bottom. And I got the thermometers in the ambient temperature just like before. And you got the hydrometers in the front center. And then I have the digital thermometers underneath the heat sources itself since that will be acting as a, let's say like a basking, yeah, like, yeah, it's a basking spot. So you'll be able to see how hot these get at, well, let's see if it focuses, at 100% power. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of time, let these two heat sources heat up, and you'll be able to see how hot they get. Let's see how these heat sources are doing. It's been about an hour. I think everything's had proper time to settle in. Let's see what these temperatures are at. So we'll start with, the heat pad, which is number one, and that is at an ambient temperature of 78.8 degrees at 100% power. We'll check the humidity. The humidity is exactly where I left it, 50%, and it's exactly 50%, so there was no increase even with the moss bowl in there. Um, so that Temperature was of course ambient, which the temperature thermometer is in the center, just like it was before with the other heat sources. So 78 degrees at full power. In most cases, that's not a very good ambient temperature for a lot of reptiles. So I'd say that's not very good. All right, let's see how the heat tape is doing. And that one is of course on the number two spot and that one is at one degree warmer at 79.8 degrees at 100% power. And just like I thought, it is at 50% humidity. So absolutely no increase in the humidity levels. All right, let's work from top to bottom. So let's do this upper enclosure. So we're gonna do the heat pad. So what are the pros? The pros are, well, a heat pad is, uh, it's simple. Time for a con. And I'm not gonna lie, there are quite a few cons when talking about this heat source, unfortunately. So there's probably gonna be a lot more cons. I'm still trying to think of a pro at this point. Um, let's just go to the biggest con. Um, although the ambient temperature is 78.8 degrees, we're gonna call it 79 degrees, and that sounds great, right? Well, I have this temperature thermometer going underneath the heat source itself, and then, yeah, if you can see that, it is 120 degrees. So this surface is 120 degrees, meaning 
that is too hot for your reptile. If you had a snake or some kind of lizard, they will not feel comfortable on this heat pad. So that's dangerous. And let's just say you're trying to heat the enclosure with this. That means if your animal wasn't going to get on it, that means you lost the surface area. So that is a massive con. 120.2 degrees. No. Huge con. A pro. So I have had customers of mine uh, reach out to me and they were wondering if I could, let's say, cut out a hole and recess a piece of glass into the bottom of the wood and you could put a heat pad on the bottom side. So not exactly inside the enclosure if you're looking for belly heat. So that is possible, but is also a con at the same time because it's unnecessary. Let's say if you had a heat bulb or a radiant heat panel, just like I showed before, and the heat is mimicking the sun and the rays are coming down and it makes the lower surface warm, creating a hot spot. So if your reptile was laying on that hot spot, then it's exactly creating what this is supposed to be. Pretty much rendering it useless if you think about it. What do they do in the wild? They don't have heat pads and they don't have heat tape. So think about that. If the heat is radiating down, it's creating a spot where it heats up. And your reptile lays on it. Then it's doing great. Now time for a con. Obviously we're gonna discuss the elephant in the room. Yep, it's dark inside that enclosure. So let's just say you were okay with the heat pad being 120 degrees and then your reptile could be potentially burned and you still wanted to put some lighting inside your enclosure. Well, you would have to get another power source ran inside your enclosure and have LED lighting. So that is making it more expensive. So I think that is a con. All right, time for another con. So this isn't exactly cheap. Um, this is a Zoomed and it's for a 50 to 60 gallon tank. Obviously this is not a tank. This is a reptile enclosure, not a fish tank. And uh, yeah, they're on average about $55, which makes it more expensive than a heat bulb kit setup that has far more to offer. And that is even including whatever heat source, you know, heat bulb you even purchased with it. So yeah, it's a little uh, on the expensive side for what you're getting. Now it's time to move on to heat tape. Let's see how hot the heat source is. So I have this thermometer on there. Oh, 117.5 degrees. It's that time again. Time for a positive. So these, uh, this, this heat tape comes in different widths. Uh, this one is a 12 inch wide width, but you can get it in other different widths, which is fantastic depending on what uh, width of gradient and how large your bins are from your rack system. Um, and you can get them in rolls and in different lengths and you can get all these different electrical connectors. And they're also, they're cheap. They're cheap in price and they're pretty efficient. So that's a massive, massive uh, pro. Um, you know, it's pro for other things. I just don't think it's a pro for a, a reptile enclosure like this, but uh, you know, I can't like say negative things about something when it's just out of context. All right, it's time for a con. So these heat, this heat tape has, um, well, it's wired. And if you don't understand electricity, there is a, a positive and a negative and the ions go from the positive and they flow all the way to the negative. And they're somewhat exposed by this, um, uh, these terminals have a little bit of tape over them. So what I feel good about having a certain moisture and maybe your animal um, goes to the restroom or spills some water, etc., etc. 
Do I think that's a hazard to have certain electrical components exposed? Absolutely. I think it's a, it's a massive con. Uh, once again, I just stress enough that these are really good for rack systems, not reptile enclosures. The interior of a reptile enclosure is just a no-go for me. All right, at this point, all the rest are gonna be cons. Once again, we're gonna like, discuss the elephant in the room. There's no light in there, so of course you would have to add another light source, LED, UVB, blah, blah, blah. It will need another light source. And then, obviously, you already saw that it was 117 degrees on the surface, so that's a no. All right, after seeing all that, I'm sure you can understand that a heat pad and a heat tape especially are not appropriate for this style of reptile enclosure. But it is possible to have a heat pad if that is something you absolutely have to have. Um, I can route out a hole and put a piece of tempered glass in there and you could put a special caulking around there so it's all watertight. So it is possible to have a heat pad put on the bottom side if you're looking for belly heat. But like I did say before, heat, heat radiates downward and it creates a nice hot spot just like it does in nature. So really, if you have heat coming down, you do not need a heat pad. And I will show you what I have my blue spuck rattlesnake set up in the next room so you understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. So this is my blue speck of rattlesnakes enclosure. They absolutely love to bask. And on the right side, I have a rock structure right there. And in the morning, he usually likes to go up on top of that rock and he soaks up all that heat because the rock, of course, soaks up the heat. I'm sure if you've ever stood on concrete when it was a warm day, it is a little bit warmer than you expected. It soaks it up. Works fantastic. So, do you need a, a heat pad? And the answer is, it's really no. But if you mentally need it, like you, you're so used to using the same thing, yeah, I could make that happen, but um, you know, the, the price of me routing out a hole and putting a piece of tempered glass is gonna be an absolute minimum of $50, and I honestly think that's a waste of your money, I'll charge you for it, but I don't think that's a good idea for you or your money. <laughs> your wallet will uh, probably thank me that it is unnecessary and sometimes doing things differently is just better. So having a heat coming down to radiate is a huge positive. I think that pretty much covers all the information. I hope you learned a lot. Um, in conclusion, I would definitely say that Heat bulbs work fantastic. Obviously, I use them. I love them. Uh, you may disagree. Um, also, I do like radiant heat panels. I cannot deny, although they are expensive, they are nice. They do work fantastically. So it is pretty much about like what you desire and what you think is best for your reptile needs. It's all up to you. So it's your decision. So hopefully, I gave you enough um, input and knowledge to uh, show you what may be best for your situation so that definitely makes me happy also if you think that there is another pro and con that I may have missed because that is highly possible um, go ahead drop it in the comment section below so if you are interested in a heat bulb kit of course I do have them on my website talkingserpents.com there will be a link down in the description below for that and then I will have a link down in the description for the Spider Robotics website for the nice thermostat that I used to test all these reptile enclosures. I don't have, there's just so many nice things to say about this thermostat. I, I, there's gonna have to be a separate video for it. It's, it's too incredible. All right, that's the end of the video. I hope you're able to gain a lot of knowledge off of this video of all the, uh, the things that we learned together. So if you like the video, strike that like button. If you have any comments, post in the comment section below. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.